My name is Beth Vercolio Osmond, and um, I am from Cedar Valley Sustainable Farm in Ottawa, Illinois. We're about 80 miles southwest of Chicago, so that's our primary market. And before I get started into the nuts and bolts of running our CSA, I'm going to give you just a brief background. We started our farm in 2002. Um, we were living in the Chicago suburbs. Both my husband and I were working at corporate jobs. And, um, you know, like you do, we just decided to just start a farm. <laughs> so uh, there's a bit more of a backstory there. But at any rate, we did start our farm. We were originally a vegetable CSA. And we got our SARE grant in 2006. And our SARE grant was to investigate taking meat to the farmer's market. And we did that, and it was, we enjoyed it a lot. And we really liked having the animals. My husband had grown up on a farm, missed the livestock, and so it brought that, that brought livestock to our farm. And um, we, enjoyed the CS, we enjoyed the farmer's market, but we, we didn't want to give up our CSA. And I'm assuming everyone in this room knows, but just to cover my bases, community-supported agriculture is CSA. And my very quick thumbnail description of that for people who don't know what it is, is it's a partnership of farmers and consumers working together in a mutually beneficial relationship. So the consumers know where their food is coming from. The farmers know where our products are going. We can plan for the future. And we did start a vegetable CSA initially. And when we started raising more livestock and taking meat to the farmer's market, we found we did not want to give up our CSA. We really liked that relationship model. And so we developed a meat CSA. No one else was doing it at the time, not that we could find at any rate. So we had the advantage of being able to make it up, and there was no way to do it wrong because there was nobody doing it. Um, of course, the challenge was there was nobody doing it, so we were making it up from scratch. So that's what I'm going to talk about today is what that ended up looking like. And this isn't from the production side of things, um, but this is from the managing the CSA business side, which is often the part that I do a lot of. Um, this picture here, just real briefly, that's Jody, my husband. Um, and he's pulling one of our chicken pens. We do raise, um, we, our, our CSA includes beef, pork, chicken, and eggs. Um, we raise all of our chicken, all of our eggs, most of our pork, and a little bit of our beef. We primarily partner with another farm for our beef. So that's sort of the overview of what we raise. Um, so I'm going to talk briefly just a kind of a, a 10,000 foot overview of what our CSA looks like. Um, and then I'm going to go into how I manage that and how we market it. So we're going to talk a lot about the tools that I've developed in order to run the business of our CSA. So the broad overview, we currently have around 200 active members. And for us, that means um, a once a month delivery for the most part. There's always exceptions. But generally, about 200 active members that are getting a bag of meat like this each month. And, um, we do actually drag coolers around, which is kind of nice. Um, we have these thermal bags. We pack the bags. Um, we determine what goes into them, and we're going to talk about that. And then we put them in our coolers, and we take them to our delivery locations. Although, to be fair, we are always within a four-hour window of non-refrigeration, so I think we're cool. Um, we, ha we offer three sizes of shares at this point, which is a fairly recent innovation for us. We used to just do a share. Um, we've, we've gotten a little more flexible with that. Um, every time we get more flexible, it means more work for me. So I, I take, those very, take those steps very carefully. Um, but now we do offer a small share, which is about half the size of our regular, and a large share, which is about a regular and a half. Um, we do three, six, or 12-month investing shares. So people can buy a three-month share, a six-month share, a 12-month share. Price breaks, of course, as they commit for a longer time. And then we do just a rolling sign-up and a rolling renewal. So each month, I've got a list of people who they're getting their last share for the, 
for their cycle, however long that was, and they'll get a renewal notice saying, hey, it's time to re-up. We also recently added, I guess not so recently now, but we added monthly sustaining shares, and I totally stole that term from my local public radio station, who wanted me to be a sustaining member, and I went, hey, that's good. So a sustaining share means that they pay by the month, so there isn't as big a financial upfront commitment, um, and there really isn't any con contractual commitment. Um, it could just be they come for one month and they, they stop. But there is kind of that mental, like I've committed to this, I'm, I'm doing this every month, and it helps people budget for that a little bit, uh, a little bit easier. Question? Yeah, absolutely. We love them. <laughs> we have people who have gotten our meat f for uh, six, eight years. Um, you know, we've, we've, they're not all that long term, but we do have some, which are, which are fantastic. Um, so the monthly sustaining shares, either I keep a credit card on file and just punch it into my Square app at the beginning of each month, or they set it up on their side, so I'm just getting a check or a, an electronic transfer from their bank. And um, we actually do have a price differential there because the credit card company, of course, charges me more for manually entering, so there's a bit of an upcharge there. But they do have those options. Um, we have nine different delivery locations um, throughout Chicago and some suburbs, and they can also pick up on farm. And then each share includes, and this is the regular share, includes two to three cuts each of beef, pork, chicken, and then a dozen or two dozen eggs. So, and those vary, and we'll talk about how I determine what goes into the share each month in a few minutes. So, community-supported agriculture has some real advantages. Um, building relationships with the members, like I said, we've got members, I've got members who I've known them since, the, I've known their kids since they were born. You know, their kids have grown up eating my meat, and I love that. Um, and I've got members who have become really good friends. Um, I've got members who have in, enticed me to do really ridiculous things. Um, <laughs> like running for Congress last month. <laughs> um, the income is, is, is it's certain is a strong word, word but we do ha it's predictable. We know what's coming, and we have a pretty predictable rate of renewal as well. And we have that capital available up front because they're paying ahead and then getting their share, for the most part. Of course, the monthly members, it's more of a just-in-time, but we try to be flexible so everybody can, uh, can fit their budget. And then the deliveries are a really efficient use of our time. I can go and deliver 20 or 30 shares in an hour and move more product than I would standing at farmer's market for six hours, which is nice. Um, challenges are, of course, recruiting members, building awareness, customer education, all of those things. CSA isn't for everybody, and they're certainly better known now than they were when we started doing this. Um, there are now, I want to say around 10 meat CSAs in the Chicagoland area, so there are more people who are aware of it and who are ready to commit to that. Um, and some people love it. Some people say it's like Christmas. Every time I get my bag, I don't know what I'm going to get. It's a surprise. Well, it's not if they read their email, but it's a surprise if they don't read their email, and, and it's something new, and they're trying new things. Um, on the other hand, that really drives some people crazy. My family only wants to eat X, Y, and Z, or that's what I know how to cook. So it's not for everybody, and that's okay. Yes? Um, anything about recidivism or loyalty, um, customer retention, and any strategy that you've employed to kind of successfully manage that? Um, that probably comes up a little more in my marketing section. If I don't answer your question, though, get back to me. Um, so I use some different management tools, um, an Excel spreadsheet, spreadsheets, an access database, and Google Docs. One of the things that I bought with our SARE grant was that access database that was initially going to help me track my inventory um, in my freezer for farmers markets. I don't use it that way, but I have built a customer database where I keep track of all of my customer accounts. So start with, at the top with Excel. 
this is how I plan my shares. And I know you guys can't read that because the details and the details aren't important. But basically what this is is a list of the different cuts I have available. And then it goes by delivery location and by month. So I know that in March, Logan Square got pork tenderloin uh, and pork chops and andouille sausage. And those numbers are my prices. So I don't weigh and price each piece, but I have a general idea. I work with my butcher to keep my, my cuts pretty consistent. And so I know how much that would, would price if I were weighing each individual piece. And that's what I estimate it as. So this is the, the pork section, for example. This is the beef section of that same spreadsheet. So it, I don't know where it tracks what. But then I've also, so I've got my beef. And again, by month, I total it. And I'm aiming for a particular price point because that's the value of the price each month. So when people ask, how many, how many pounds do I get? I can give them an estimate, but it, it varies. And the really great thing here is, is once I put my beef and my pork in, then I've got a, I, I've got a, a range left over. I need to sell, or I need to fill 31 more dollars, or I need 40 more dollars in value. And my chicken is frozen, and it's weighed at all different, price, at all, all different places, so I can figure out how many pounds do I, of chicken do I need to make $37 worth of value, and then when we build the shares, we're just putting chicken in that matches that weight, roughly. But um, so we do a, the chick. We do holes and halves only. Um, one of the reasons I don't do cuts is because it gives me this flexibility. Another reason is it just costs so much more in the processing. Um, so I do holes and halves, and I just I aim for a weight. I need five and a half pounds. I need seven pounds of chicken, and so I put the different pieces together to get to that weight. And that's how we build each month's bag. Then once I know what's going in the bag, and that's usually a day or two before the delivery, I'll send out an email. I send an email early in the week saying, hey, don't forget this, your, your delivery's coming up this weekend. Um, right before the delivery, a day or two before, I'll send another email. Don't forget, delivery's coming up this weekend, and here's what you're going to get. So that helps me keep the pickup rate fairly high. We theoretically have a penalty if people miss and don't tell us. They don't get charged for the share because, I mean, a share is $108 plus, you know, the delivery charge and whatever. I know I couldn't afford to be a member for very long if I forgot to pick up a share and got charged for $100 worth of product that I didn't get. Um, so they don't get charged for a share because unlike a produce CSA, it doesn't go to waste. It stays frozen, it comes back home, it goes back in the freezer. It's a pain, but it's not the end of the world. So in theory, we do charge them for misses that they don't tell us about, but honestly, I really don't ever do that. So we do encourage people to pick up and be, be courteous about it, and most are. Most will let us know that they're going to miss a week, or oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, something came up and I forgot, or it works out. So yeah, so bags are planned. The delivery uh, reminder goes out with the list. This is what my, this is a screenshot from my access database. So this is where I'm tracking my members. Um, this is the information I'm collecting just as far as who they are, where they live, how to contact them, and what their share looks like. And this is probably, I'm sure, difficult to read, but this is where their schedule, I told you, they, do, they, they get a share every month that there is a little bit of flexibility there because we do offer an every other month option. And originally we started doing that because we didn't do half-sized shares. And so if people didn't, didn't need as much, didn't want as much as a share every month, we just said you can pick up on odd months or you can pick up on even months. Um, but now they also have a size choice. So this person has a very limited meat eating um, schedule because they get a small share every other month. So whatever. Um, share exclusions. We do not let people say, I want bacon, but I don't want pork chops, or I want, I, I only want steaks, or no. We, we don't do custom orders, but we do let them exclude an entire species. So you can say, I don't want beef, I don't want pork, I don't want chicken. Yes. Want to go to 
I started doing this, I was in 2007, and I didn't have any database experience. I had some tech experience. Um, so I'm a very, I'm just going to do it myself kind of person. I, I didn't find anything that suited me. And I know now that there are CSA management databases out there. Um, people have tried to sell them to me. And it's like, well, I've already paid for this, and it, it works. Um, so there wasn't anything special other than this was the, the database I picked and figured out how to build. Um, so they also track their location. And then down here, it's, these, these are really important, um, pulling in from other parts of the database. This is the current balance. So I can always track how many shares they have left by looking at their current balance. And then that's where I do my deposit. So this, because this is a sustaining member, $60 it goes in every month, and then she always has a balance of one share left. If I have a six-month member, then their $660 is going to go in every six months, and each month that I charge her or indicate that that person has picked up, then my database just subtracts from their running balance. So the, the account balance is always just how, many, how much they have left in their account. So if it's a six-month share, they've picked up three months' worth, and they have three months left. So it's just a running balance. Um, and then the other tool that I use, I said, is the Google Docs. And I use those for my delivery checklist. So in my database, I run a report. This is what I need for, this, for today's delivery to Beguile Brewery. And these are the people that are going to be picking up, and these are the sizes that I need, and the, the specials, and whatever. So I'll copy that over into a Google Doc. There's a couple of places in my system. One second, I might answer your question. A couple of places in my system where it is not seamless. And um, like the guys at the gas and sip, it's intentional. It's on purpose. Um, Sign up on my website, I get an email. I have to manually enter that email or that, that sign up into my database. I, rather than having the form populate the database, I like having that, that manual step because that means I'm looking at every new sign up. And that means that I'm, I'm aware of who's coming in. Have they paid? Have they not? Are there special requests? Is there something I need to, to address? So there's that manual stop. It has to go through me or it has to go through Jody. Um, same thing with my pickup list. I don't want to be messing with my database, my original document, when I'm out at a delivery site and I'm working on my phone and stuff happens. I don't want to, I don't want to risk messing up my database because I screwed up some entry when I was out at a site. So that's just a spreadsheet. It's a Google Doc, so I can access it from anywhere. Um, back in the day, we actually did these on paper. There was a clipboard and a checklist. Um, we do it electronically now. But again, I'm not going into my original data with this stuff that's happening out on the fly. Because we, we go to a lot of breweries, and you, you don't want to risk messing up my database when we're at a brewery. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so that's the information I have with me at the delivery. I keep track of who's picked up, how many shares they've picked up. Um, and just as a note, like if they've renewed and given me a check, I note it in there just so when I'm updating my database, I make sure to give them credit for that renewal. Um, so you had a question about using the data, the doc? Uh, the delivery yes. So you're physically there, you don't have freezer space there? And Correct. We are physically there for an hour or an hour and a half. Um, we have, is it my next slide? Delivery locations. Perfect. Um, we do deliver at our farmer's market. We do one market every Sunday from May through October. And that's our longest pickup window because we're there for the whole six hours. So people can pick up any time during that window. Most of our deliveries, though, year-round happen at complimentary businesses. Um, there's a theme here. <laughs> we like beer. 
Actually, when we first started doing this, we, we were at a lot of wine shops and wine and cheese shops. And our pickup locations have evolved as the neighborhoods have evolved. Um, craft breweries are super popular right now, you might have noticed. Um, and that's a really good fit. People who are willing to pay for that, they pay that extra for the quality beer, pay that extra for the quality meat, they're often the same people. Um, as you saw back here, people are picking up their meat, they're picking up a growler, they're having a beer. It's a really good relationship with the um, breweries that we, that we do deliveries at. Um, so we're a lot of breweries and a daycare center, but <laughs> so just one of those things. So we go in with our coolers. Um, we set up, we take a little bit of floor space for an hour or an hour and a half. And the businesses are super welcoming, very happy to have us. And it's, it's always a good symbiotic relationship. Um, our customers buy their beer, their customers buy our meat, and everybody goes home happy. Yes, you had a question? No, I, I, I pack these. I set up a little um, assembly line, for lack of a better term, outside my cooler, or my freezer. Um, I've got some big coolers. Each cooler gets five bags, and each bag gets, you know, that, that Excel spreadsheet that I showed you. You know, I've got my list of everybody needs beef, everybody needs steak, everybody needs ground beef, everybody's getting pork chops and whatever, and I put those in. And then there's a few specials. The, I need two no porks for this spot, or I need one large share for this spot. The vast majority are still that regular, everybody gets the same thing. I can get, grab any bag and give it to them, except with those few exceptions, and those are segregated. Yes? Can you do a deposit on the bags, or they just keep piling up? Or, you know, they, keep they, dis they keep disappearing. <laughs> Theoretically, they bring their bag back every month, and we trade it out for a full one. Um, every so often, I find that I'm out of bags, and it's, in fact, right now, time to renew, or to order a bunch more bags. So they do rip, they do disappear, people forget them or lose them or whatever. Um, but for the most part, we get most of them back. And so we collect an empty, we give them a full, and then we just take them home and refill them. Yeah, you I buy like, you could if I had done the order that I'm supposed to do this week. <laughs> but it's been a long time since I've ordered and I don't remember. I want to say they cost us like three fifty dollars a piece. Okay. Um, so it's, it's not terrible. Yeah, you had a question? Oh, yeah. Do you do those from Uline? No. I don't order anything from Uline anymore. That's a different political discussion. <laughs> but no. Um, I go through, I want to say Inkhead. There's a number of different like imprint companies that you can order things from. Yeah. Yes. What's the weight of a share that goes into one of these bags? It varies. Um, typically a regular share is going to run around 14 to 16 pounds. And that varies depending on the value because as I said earlier, I go by value, so if it's a month that you're getting um, premium steaks, the package is worth $22, the overall weight's going to be a little less. There's, it, it balances out because I'll then you'll get a couple of other cheaper cuts, so the weight stays pretty consistent. But we do do it by value rather than weight, so I don't guarantee a weight. I do guarantee a value. Yes? Um, a regular share is uh, $108, so what they're paying is, hundred. depending on how they pay, um, if you're paying 12 months at a time, it's 12 times 108, and that's, there's no, no upcharge. Um, the shorter amount of time, you know, we build in a little bit of a delivery charge, a little bit of a cushion there with the most expensive possible option being $118. And that's if you're just ordering one share, I have no guarantee you're ever gonna come back, I'm probably not gonna see my bag again, all of those things, that's, that's the highest possible cost. 
Um, no, because everything going into them is frozen and wrapped. So I'm, occasionally, if one comes back yucky, I'll either just not use it anymore or, or clean them out by hand. Um, I have run them through the washing machine just for my, my own grocery bags or whatever. So you can. Um, they don't hold up super, for a whole lot of wash washings. But um, generally, they, it's just a visual inspection. If they look OK, they're fine. All right, um, so talk a little bit about marketing the CSA. And I, again here, tell me if I, if I answer your question. Tell me again what your question was exactly. Uh, retention, loyalty. Retention, right. So one of the ways I do that, well, let me talk about this slide. So this is what a, what a CSA is. It's a monthly assortment, beef, pork, chicken, and eggs. The customers do not have a choice of what they're getting <coughs> other than they can say, I don't want pork, or I don't eat beef, or whatever. Other, within that range, they're getting a variety. Now, that being said, I don't usually do liver. I don't usually do, um, I do do soup bones in the winter. I try and kind of reflect the seasonality. You'll get bratwurst in the summer and soup bones in the winter. But I try and use as much of the animal as, as we can. And I mix it up. So you're not going to get stew meat three months in a row. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vary that. Um, and then we also do direct sales at the farmer's market. So this is a very old picture. Oh my gosh, the kids are little. Um, of our farmer's market setup. So as far as customer retention, we do a monthly newsletter. We do the in-person deliveries. It's either my husband or I doing the delivery so they're getting that contact. Um, we do member events. Um, either on the summertime we invite people out to the farm or we try and do at least once a year an event at each delivery location. Um, we recently had wine and cheese and uh, a meet the farmer event at one of our um, retail stores. We do actually still have one wine shop that we deliver to. It's our, our oldest delivery location. Um, we've got an event coming up at another at one of our brew pubs, Flights with the Farmer. So we're going to you know, invite people to come and have a beer with us and chat and visit. So all of those relationship building things are also retention building things. Um, we ask people to renew. I don't depend on them to remember that it's time to, to get their, their meat. So when you get down to just one share left on your, one month left on your share, you'll get a renewal reminder from me saying basically, hey, this is the last, hope you're enjoying your meat. This is the last month of your, of your share. You can renew when you pick up. Most people do that. Um, that being said, there is some drop off. And it doesn't work for everybody, or people are moving, or people's financial situation changes. Um, we sometimes will have people drop out and come back. So on the whole, our retention is probably let me, we stay pretty steady. So we gain a few new shares every month. We lose a few shares every month. It balances out for the most part. Um, on a good month, we gain more than we, we drop. Um, but there's always a little bit of up and down. So I don't track that really specifically because there is that rolling sign up. I can't say, in 2017, this was the number of members we had because we sold all of the shares by June and we ended in October because it is just a continual sign up. Which would you, I mean, without pinning you down to a number, is sure. it, it like a 10 or 20% loss or like a 50% loss? You know what I mean? From month yeah. to month, it's probably maybe five people. So out of 200, that's 2.5%. New shares coming, old shares dropping. Um, overall, year over year, we have seen some decline. I think at our highest, we probably had about 225 to 230 monthly shares. Um, and that was a while ago. I mean, the, the recession and the decline has hit. But beyond that, we've stayed fairly steady. And to do that, we have come up with some, some options for people. We've let them go month to month. We've given them different share sizes to meet their needs or to you know, get a little less if that's what their budget demands. 
Yes. They do, yeah. It's no, it, 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 there isn't really. Um, I always, when I'm estimating those numbers, I'm always erring on, on, in their favor. Um, the one thing that consistently I know is cheaper than at the farmer's market is the premium stakes. I always undervalue those in the share. Um, and everything else I tend to undervalue. I shoot for 10%-ish. Um, and if they shop at the farmer's market, they do get a 10% discount on anything additional they buy. So, roughly. So, member recruitment. Word of mouth is huge. Um, our, our customers tell their friends. Um, every so often, we'll run a sale and say, you know, tell your friends and they can get whatever. You know, you'll get an extra dozen eggs or they'll get so much off or that sort of thing. Um, try and be creative, keep those interesting. Um, we do group presentations. We'll go out and speak to um, a church green committee, um, a group of people in a member's home. We did a lot more of those in the early days, um, but we still do. We call it taking our show on the road. And um, we'll come, and, and if you've got a group of people who sit still and listen to us, we'll talk. Um, we do stuff at our delivery locations. Like I said, we'll do events at delivery locations. We also always have our brochures out at our delivery locations. Um, so people can, can take those. The folks who work there or who run the, um, the shop, you know, whether that's the, the wine store or the, the group hub or whatever, they're often members or have been members, so know us and will talk us up and talk to people about us. Um, we do social media. We have, we have, we're listed on the internet in various places, of course, all the usual local harvest and, and those kinds of places. We have a pretty, um, pretty good website, if I do say so myself, as I'm the website designer. Um, and we try and do media whenever we can. Our, our goal is to always be media ready. So if someone wants a quote, if someone wants a story, um, we are more than happy to provide that um, on a, well, I can tell that story. So those are all of the different ways that we try and spread the word. Here I have a screenshot of the front page of our website. Um, we talk about what CSA is. We have the different options to buy. We have some reviews, and then we have a mailing list. Um, my mailing list, my email list is about almost 1,600 people. So obviously not all of those are current members. Some are former, some are, are future members, we hope. Um, so we do email regularly, mostly. And um, those aren't usually sales focused, but more here's what's going on at the farm, here's what we've been up to. Um, here's an interesting article that we found that we think you should, should know about, um, more informational. And um, one, a couple things I haven't mentioned just real briefly are discovery packages. That's where folks can buy a small, just a one-off small package. Those are mostly priced at $60 and they include, there's a couple of different ones. There's one you can get just chicken. There's one you can get a sampler where you get some beef, some pork, some chicken. Um, so a few different choices there if people just want to try us out or give it as a gift. Um, you can also order a single month share and um, try it that way without committing. And then custom butchered if people want to get a quarter beef, a half a hog, a whole beef. Um, we also can accommodate that. So that's the, the management, um, the organization of the CSA in a nutshell.